Several years ago, my sister sent an email out to the whole family because she was particularly outraged about the destruction of the rainforest in Indonesia. The article was about the orangutan habitat and how they were being displaced and killed to make room for palm oil production. Palm oil is in products such as shampoos, soaps, cleaners, and food. So she asked us all in the family to stop using palm oil products, and then she asked us to get our neighbors and people on our street to stop using palm oil products. And I thought, whoa, that could take a lot of time. There's a lot of people on our street. Why can't we just get the darn grocery store to stop selling palm oil products, and then we'll have all the streets covered? Well, the results of that are still pending, but it got me to think on a more macro level about impact and opportunity, and I began to wonder, is there a business sector out there that has a greater opportunity to be more sustainable than the grocery store? Think about all the impact and energy associated with producing, manufacturing, and transporting tens of thousands of products around the world to the 38,000 grocery stores in America. It's immense. And the amount of energy they use at the grocery store is immense. Decade after decade after decade, grocery stores use more energy per square foot than any other business type. And the flow of materials in the back, all the cardboard, all the packaging, all the plastic, all the food, and all the food waste. So I would argue that there is no industry sector or business sector that has a greater opportunity to be more sustainable than the grocery store. But I would also add, there is no business sector out there that has the opportunity to communicate and demonstrate the importance of sustainability than the grocery sector. And I say that because I don't really see them doing that. It almost seems like the grocery store is reluctant to lead us towards a more sustainable future. And that's unfortunate and odd. It's unfortunate because no other business sector gets us in the door with as much frequency as the grocery stores do. We go to the grocery stores between 1.8 and 2.2 times per week. That's twice per week. And it seems like that they are not seizing this opportunity to lead in helping us have a more sustainable future. And it's odd because the market research says that they have a lot to benefit if they do so. There's a growing interest in sustainable products. There's a growing interest in going to sustainable businesses. 77% of Americans are interested in the environmental attributes of the products that they're shopping for. That's up from 71% from two years before that, and 66 and 63 and 57 and 55. It has been on a steady and significant incline for two decades, yet the grocery sector is slow to react to that. It's almost as if they are stuck in time. If our planet is going to be more sustainable in the future, or even somewhat measurably more sustainable in the future, grocery stores have to stop looking and operating like it's 1960. They still generate a lot of waste out the back. They're still challenged with trying to figure out how to use energy efficiently. And it's the same sorts of products on the shelves decade after decade after decade. Why is that? Well, grocery stores exist on single-digit profit margins. And by single-digit, I don't mean like 7, 8, and 9%. I mean one, and maybe two. After selling $18 million worth of product in a year, a grocery store might have $300,000 left over as profit. That is a 1.7% profit margin. That's the average profit margin for the industry in America. That is very slim. It doesn't give them a lot of leeway to think about Innovation, being innovative, or being creative, or thinking about a sustainable future. But we need to encourage them to do that. Otherwise, it is going to keep looking decade and decade and decade like it, like it always has been. I have found that helping them understand the economics of efficiency is a good stepping stone to getting them to becoming more sustainable. Now, a grocery store sells $18 million worth of product in a year, and their profit's about 300000 but those operating costs are almost right under where that revenue line is. Any time that they can save some money, particularly with being more efficient, it's going to translate over to the revenue side. So for every dollar in the electrical energy that they can save, and refrigeration is mostly electrical, it doesn't translate to one dollar on the revenue side. That one dollar drop in operating costs 
is equivalent to a chunk of $18 on the revenue side. But they don't know that. So what does that look like at a grocery store? Well, my kids like to go to the grocery store and tell me how much air curtain space is blocked every time we're, every time we're there to go shopping. I have a 10 and 11 year old and they'll typically come up and say, hey dad, there's 20 feet of blocked air curtain space at the grocery store today. <laughs> and what, they mean, what, what that means is that those open refrigeration cases that are displaying products, it'd be more efficient if they had doors on them, but the open ones, they could operate more efficiently by not blocking the vent at the bottom. So those carrots right there are blocking that vent on the bottom, which is trying to suck that cold air back in. There's an air curtain that's trying to decrease the amount of air exchange from the refrigerated unit in the store. And when you have product jutting out, or a sales tag jutting out over that vent on the bottom right under those carrots, it's like sticking your hand in a waterfall. All that cold air just drops out and runs onto the floor, and the customers are all complaining about how cold they are in the store, and that unit is running very inefficient. And that is a three-minute fix. But any grocery store you go to in America is going to have about 20 feet blocked. And they know it. My kids know it's 20 feet because the squares on the floor are all 12 by 12, and so they can run around the store and count up how much blocked airspace there is. And it's $100 a year for every square. So a 200, so a 20-foot block in space is going to be about a $2,000 cost to that store. Now, when they reduce, if they can fix that by spending three minutes, maybe twice a day, just pushing that stuff back, they will reduce that operating cost by $2,000. But on the revenue side, that's $36,000 in sales. And a lot of these grocery stores don't know that. And remember, they only make about $300,000 in profit. That's 12% of their profit. And all they need to do is spend three minutes, twice a day, pushing that stuff back. It would be cheaper to give those carrots away for free to a customer than to keep them on that vent blocking that air. Another example is seafood. <laughs> Grocery stores love to display seafood on ice, but making ice with electricity is very expensive. A refrigerated seafood display will use $5,000 less energy than an iced seafood display. And a refrigerated seafood display uses 100,000 gallons less water, and you don't need to heat the water up with propane to melt it down at the end of the night. So my kids like to go around and see what the seafood displays look like at different grocery stores. Now that $5,000, if they're able to move away from an iced seafood display, that $5,000 is equivalent to about 90,000 on the revenue side. And if a grocery store chain has 200 stores, 5,000 times 200, that's a million. But we know that's not a million because you've got to multiply it by 18. Is it really worth $18 million to display seafood or fish heads on ice? I was at a grocery store out west a couple years ago, and I asked an employee, what do you guys do about food waste? And he goes, I don't know. Let's go to the customer service and ask. So we walked 30 feet over, and he said, this guy wants to know about food waste. And I said, do you compost it? Do you donate it? What do you do? And the woman said, no, 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 we cannot do anything like that. We have strictly legal liabilities that, no, it all has to go in the trash, which is unfortunate because they pay by the pound and food is heavy. And I said, well, you know, you really ought to think about either composting it or donating it or doing something. And right as I was saying that, the manager came up and she said, what did you want to know? And I said, well, I was wondering about food waste. And she said, oh, yeah, we have a very strong composting program and we donate 15,000 pounds a week to the food shelter. And I was like, wow. Three different employees, three different answers. The opportunity to communicate and demonstrate sustainability exists internally there as well, not just externally to its customers. And finally, what about the palm oil? What about the sustainable products at your store? Are you able to find sustainable products at your store? Yeah, you can find organic and local now. That's pretty easy. But what about humanely raised meat? What about fair trade stuff? Or what about a green certified cleaning chemical? Can you find that? We're finding more and more grocery stores are starting to highlight that, but really your typical average American grocery store is hiding those products. We'd like to see them called out in the aisles with the other products, but called out as more sustainable, particularly when you know 77% could be interested in that. There is no marketing advantage to having them hidden and not highlighted. So I ask you that because I know most of you in the audience today are going to be going to a grocery store sometime in the next three or four days. And I know you're going to go with a list. 
So I'm going to give you a list. And we have these out in the lobby area, but I'm going to give you a list of not of stuff to buy, but of stuff to look for. These four things that I just mentioned. Because I'd like to see what is at your grocery store. And I want to give you the opportunity to sort of look at your grocery store and maybe even encourage them to be more sustainable. So often we go to the grocery store and we fill our carriage up with the products and we put them on the conveyor belt and then we, slide, we swipe our card and we look up and we say, okay, see ya, and we walk out. We are not seizing the opportunity to help the grocery stores be more sustainable. We are there a hundred times a year and we say nothing. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to say something. Because of these four things, one of them you have to ask about the food waste. I suggest asking either the cashier or a manager. And you can tell them, I'm interested in our grocery stores becoming more sustainable. This is the most important business sector we have. And it's time for us to start demanding more from our grocery stores. And maybe this will help pull them out of the time warp. Thank you. <laughs>